Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum. I hope that you all are doing fine. Now in this video, we are going to start with the trauma, maxillofacial trauma. Now, why is this video so important? We are living in an era of speed. We now want everything quick, isn't it? Whether it be speeding our vehicles or even a speedy internet connection. Slow internet is very irritating, right? Anyway, so because of the need for speed, today every person is a potential candidate for trauma. Like with speed and all, there is always a risk of accident. Now, a face is one of the most essential part of a body because how we look gives us an identity and a confidence, right? God forbid if someone has a maxillofacial trauma, that is trauma to the face, Regaining the aesthetics is a major concern in addition to maintaining the function, right? We want to maintain the function obviously, but we also have to look for the aesthetic. We have to restore the aesthetics of the patient. So as a dental surgeon, it is our duty to know all the principles of treatment of the maxillofacial injuries. So what to do first when you see a trauma patient? We have to do an immediate general evaluation of the patient. Is the patient safe or does he need any emergency treatment? There could be certain emergencies like hemorrhage, shock, cardiac arrest, airway obstruction, spinal cord injuries that can cause death of the patient. There could be fractures in the skull that can lead to intracranial hemorrhage, hemorrhage inside the brain that can be very serious. There could be fractured ribs, isn't it? Rupture of the spleen and kidney. So all these things can put the patient into a danger, right? So we have to do a immediate general evaluation. Look for emergency. Is there any emergency? Before looking at the face, before looking at the maxillofacial trauma, have a look at the general body of the patient, general condition of the patient, okay? So what did we learn? We have to do immediate general evaluation. We have to restore the function. And we have to restore the aesthetics. So we have to proceed in this manner. First we have to do an immediate general evaluation. Then we have to think about restoring the function and then the aesthetics. Be smart, okay? Don't rush into, you know, treatment of an obvious facial injury before completely evaluating the patient. But you also cannot ignore the facial injury if you have minor injuries here. Like, don't go for the minor injuries. Face is more important. At the same time, emergencies are more important than the face. Got my point, right? Emergencies are more important than face and face is more important than minor injuries, okay? Now, let us talk about the ABCs of the trauma. We have A, which is airway with cervical spine control. We have B, which is breathing and ventilation. We have C, which is circulation with hemorrhage control. We have D, which is disability neurological status. We have E, which is exposure, complete examination of the patient. So these are the ABCs of the life preservation. We have airway with cervical spine control. We have breathing and ventilation, circulation with hemorrhage control, disability, neurological status, and then the exposure, complete examination. So these are the ABCs of life preservation. I hope I made it clear. Now let us go through these one by one. In this video we will be covering the A and B and in the next video we are going to cover the C, D, E, right? So let's move on. Okay, so the first one was airway with cervical spine control and B was breathing and ventilation. So what we have to do, we have to maintain the airway of the patient. How can you do that? Try to talk to your patient if he is in a condition to talk. If the patient is not able to talk or he is unconscious, this goes out of the way, right? In such situations, what we can do is, we can do a chin lift or jaw thrust maneuver. 
if there is any foreign debris any foreign body in the mouth we have to remove it either using our hand that is manually or you can even use a suction machine to do that okay we have to make sure that the cervical spine should not have any movement why because there could be injury in the cervical spine and this can be life threatening for the patient so it is better that you assume that cervical injury has already happened even though it might not have happened it is better to stay safe and assume that spinal injury might have happened okay so don't move the cervical spine prevent movement of the cervical spine especially in cases where we have blunt injuries above the clavicle level so we learned a very important precaution that we have to avoid hyperextension or hyperflexion of the patient's head now what we can do you can make the patient wear a hard cervical collar and you can support this region by a sandbag and a tape so till now we have learned that we have to position the patient properly and we have to do the cleaning of you know the injury we have to see if there is any obstruction in the patient's you know airway because of any you know foreign body or you know any kind of uh, bone injury right now what if we have a airway obstruction because of the fracture in the maxilla what you can do so this is the anterior nasal aperture this is the posterior nasal aperture what you can do is you can place your index and middle finger here at the posterior region okay and we have to draw the maxilla we have to push the maxilla upward right and forward okay this is what we have to do also keep in mind that at the same time we have to have stability at the forehead right because we don't want our cervical spine to be moving right we have to make sure that this is movement free so have a balance here and then put your index and middle finger here in the posterior region and then push the maxilla up and forward okay so that is called as the digital disimpaction we are using our digits right the fingers of a hand to do it now we also have to recognize respiratory distress is the patient really struggling to breathe you have to find that out how will you do that there are certain points that we can look for there are certain signs and symptoms that we can look for let us see what they are the patient can have anxiety the patient could be rapidly breathing there is tachypnea more than 25 per minute there could be stridor intercostal retraction okay so there could be retraction in the intercostal muscles the patient could be using accessory muscles of respiration the voice can become hoarse like my voice right now <laughs> there could be pallor yellowing of the skin there could be a rapid heartbeat called as tachycardia there could be increase in blood pressure there could be signs of hypoxia means signs that the patient oxygen level is reducing like bluish skin you know bluish appearance of the skin confusion agitation many more things given in your textbook so do refer to all the necessary you know points that can help us recognize if the patient is really having difficulty in you know having oxygen okay all these signs the like anxiety tachypnea stridor intercostal retraction voice can become hoarse now what if our patient is unconscious he is not breathing how will you save his life so that is the time when we go for something that is called so that is called as the endotracheal intubation so what is this in this procedure as you can see here we place a tube in the windpipe okay through the trachea we can do it either through the mouth or through the nose okay that is the endotracheal intubation but there could be times when we cannot do so we cannot do it via the mouth or the nose because of the type of injury the patient has had means you know it could be any injury where this entire area has been damaged 
how will you give oxygen to the patient now in that case what we do is called as the tracheostomy okay so what we do in tracheostomy we create an opening in the neck in order to place a tube here so instead of placing a tube here now we will place a tube here and into the windpipe all right we can also do a procedure called as cricothyrotomy so here an incision is made on the skin and then through the cricothyroid membrane we establish a airway we establish a airway now the difference between tracheostomy and cricothyrotomy is that this cricothyrotomy is easier and quicker to perform okay more detail into when we study general surgery in the near future now let us just focus on this that there are surgical methods also when we don't have a patent airway when the patient is unconscious patient is not breathing then what you can do you can go for endotracheal intubation which is done via mouth or nose or if that is not possible we can do something called as tracheostomy okay okay so here we have our tongue right so when the patient is unconscious this tongue can fall back and obstruct the airway so what do we do in such situation we have to control the tongue we have to control the patient's tongue not our tongue <laughs> okay we can do this by proper positioning of the patient right and also we can control the tongue that is we can pull the tongue out and we can maintain the tongue in the forward position by using tongue suture you can use a towel clip okay that towel clip can be attached to the patient's shirt okay take out the tongue and tie it on the <laughs> patient's shirt collar nothing to laugh about i'm really sorry <laughs> but you know the way i am visualizing it or helping you visualize makes me laugh okay so let us have a quick summary for the treatment of airway maintenance we do it by two methods non surgical method and the surgical method in the non surgical method the first one is the position of the patient we have to keep the patient supine with neck extended or head turned sideways okay you know the main aim is that saliva and blood should not pool inside the mouth but it should have a you know channel or you can say it can easily come out it can be easily thrown out of the mouth okay now what we do we do the cleaning the cleaning can be done manually or by suction we have to remove any foreign bodies blood clot etc right then we have to control the tongue the patient's tongue okay by tongue suture or towel clip and also we learned that in case where we have you know maxillary fracture when the maxilla is disimpacted what we can do we can put our digits here fingers here and push the maxilla up and forward right and then we saw about the surgical options like when the patient is unconscious you cannot get him to breathe by just removing the foreign objects or you know otherwise so what we can do is endotracheal intubation okay now there could be such emergencies that we have to immediately deliver oxygen so that is done by puncturing into the tracheal lumen and we use a 12 to 14 gauge needle for a short time till we get a proper airway management so this was the a and b of the abc's i hope you found the video helpful and yes please give this video a like and let me know in the comment section below if you liked it i have really put a lot of efforts into creating the video and if i get positive comments it will make me make more such videos otherwise i get demotivated and i stop creating the you know next part 2 part 3 and so on so please give this video a thumbs up and let us get this video 100 likes from you all till we meet next time take very good care of yourself allah hafiz